guys, it's Lindsay here with the Rockwell Group and EXP. Today we'll be talking about what are the industries in Southern Oregon. And we'll be talking about the top five employers and what those industries look like. Today I'll be here with my coworker, Tim Grogan. Hey. And we'll be covering all those things. So stay tuned, make sure to like, share, and make sure to hit that bell button and subscribe for future videos. It's Lindsay here with the Rockwell Group and EXP, and today I'm here with my coworker Tim Grogan. Hey. We'll be talking a little bit about um, all the different industries that are happening in Southern Oregon. A lot of people reach out to us and they have no idea about Southern Oregon and what that looks like, especially when it comes to employment. But you know, there's a lot of different employers that are um, around the valley, a lot of different industries. But most people are like, well, what is what does Southern Oregon even do? Like, what do you, you know, what do you guys manufacture? What do you provide? Is there an economy there? What does that look like? And so today we'll talk about the top five. So what that looks like, top five, one of the biggest key points to talk about with that is that out of those top five, three of those industries actually relate to the elderly community. A lot of people know that this is a big retirement area. Um, a lot of people will retire from their jobs in neighboring states and then they'll come here and try and get away from it all and live a, a slower, more relaxed life. And so because of that, the industries around those retirees have really blown up. They're Very huge true. now. Very true. Um, and so top five, I'm just gonna name them off, is gonna be Amy's Kitchen, Asante, the health system there, Providence, which is also another health provider system, Lithia Motors, and then Pacific Retirement Services. So Asante, Providence, and Pacific Retirement, all for all of them. retirees and elderly and kind of, you know, catering to that community. Um, today we're here at Asante. Um, it is growing like crazy. <laughs> it's a huge development. The last time I was here was a long time ago and we had to walk all the way around the building because there's like five new buildings being built and we didn't even know yeah. where to park. At Asante, that's one of the, the bigger providers. There's a lot of doctors in the area, a lot of nurse practitioners, a lot of people flocking to the area for those things. Some of the other places, and we'll show you later, you know, Harry and David, they do a lot of manufacturing. Lithia Motors. So Tim actually used to work for Lithia. <laughs> for quite some time, yeah. He, he used to work for BMW, and then he started selling houses instead. Significantly more fun. Significantly yeah. more fun. Yeah, even though you can't drive a house, you can't speed down the road in a house you can only that's do that true they have rvs that's true it's true <laughs> you can try and drive a, a mobile home exactly but not the same they get around some way not the same and then you know then there's amy's kitchen which is a huge manufacturer they're on i guess they would be on the eagle point side of town yeah eagle point white city area yeah um they're a big manufacturer you've probably seen them in a lot of stores they do uh, organic soups and like Rikers burritos macaroni and cheese yes we have healthy <laughs> diets and then uh yeah providence health system they're right up the way so there's two main um large hospitals asante and providence um and then in neighboring grants pass where i live there's also um three rivers which is a part of the asante mm -hmm. uh family as well so then a couple other things that are uh, a little lesser known about oregon and the industries up here one of the big things is definitely agriculture. You'll see that a lot out here because there's a ton of farmland actually out in the Applegate. You see it more with the wineries. Um, what's your, have you ever been to the wineries out there? Yes, not necessarily the Applegate area, but uh, Tuha, I think is what it is. Oh means. yeah. One yeah. of my favorites, my wife and I go there often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like their courtyard. You get to like play games and stuff out there. It's yes. cute. But a lot of the wineries will have on site vineyards so they grow their grapes and all they do all their horticulture on site um, and then they have their tasting rooms um, but in addition to the wineries what are some of the other things that Oregon is known for agriculturally hazelnuts all day hazelnuts 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 okay I love hazelnuts I did know that that is a big industry out here Oregon is they're a huge producer right yeah one of the largest. I think last time I checked the stats was 95% of America's hazelnuts came from Oregon. All of America's hazelnuts. Can you believe that? Um, there's, when you drive up the five and you go up to Portland outside of Salem, between Eugene and like the Salem area, there's quite a few actual hazelnut. I guess they wouldn't even be vineyards. They would just be hazelnut farms. 
have to be hazelnut farms. Hazelnut farms. So <laughs> you can see because they have all the big orchard is the word. Uh, That's the word I'm looking for. Orchard. Oregon has a lot of hazelnuts. It's the Oregon State Nut. I personally take my coffee with a little bit of hazelnut and um, some almond milk because I'm that person. They're also really known for other types of berries. The berries. That's a huge thing. Yes. Um, I know that because out in the Applegate, there's a lovely little farm called Pennington Farms. Shout out to Pennington. You guys are amazing. <laughs> um, they make amazing little pies and they do what's called a Loganberry Yum Yum. What is a Loganberry Yum Yum? It's like, it's almost like, like a blended, like frosty, you know, like a, it's blended with ice and it's just straight sugar and Logan berries and you drink it in the summer. It's amazing. It's so good. Yes. Uh, it's like one of my go-to things, but they have a huge farm area. That's all their different cross pollinations of berries. So blackberries, raspberries, Logan berries. Uh, berries. yeah, the, uh, the berry family tree of Marion berries, Logan berries, all of that is deep it's hardcore um and from oregon. huh and from oregon from oregon yep another industry that takes advantage of the agriculture is did you know cranberries i did not yeah cranberries were probably the last berry i would have anticipated out of oregon yeah so cranberries they actually have a lot of growth in curry county and coos county which is actually neighboring us here curry county is just i guess it would be west of us going out to the coast um okay yeah and um, you would hit like Crescent City. And then if you went up north, then you start to hit Coos Bay and Coos County. Right, there. so the coastal towns. Yep, lots of cranberries. Is that why it's Ocean Breeze Cranberries? I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. But I do know this, that Oregon equates for 7% of the United States manufacturing of cranberries. I guess, would it be manufacturing? Production. Production. Production of cranberries. Yeah, yeah. Lots of agriculture. So. Amongst those industries, what else do you think that Oregon is known for? Fishing and forestry. Outdoors. <laughs> Constantly. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's got it. Actually, there's quite a bit of fishing and forestry. A lot of people, we actually had a gentleman in our office relocate all the way from New Jersey out to here because he loved fly fishing so much. Who? Um, Mike. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that's Mike's how far he came. Holy cow. Huge fly fisherman. Yeah. I knew he was, but I didn't know it was a relocation type. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's one of the things that sold him. So you'll notice as you go through Oregon, there's a lot of BLM areas, which, and even when you're looking up uh, real estate, a lot of people, those are desirable home listings is if it's mm -hmm. backed up to BLM, that's Bureau of Land Management. And what that means is there's not going to be any development behind you on that area. So yeah, that's a, it's a huge industry. Um, we have a lot of people that move up here to be park rangers, yeah. you know, camp hosts. I think one day I'll probably retire and just have That's my dogs. Idle. Yeah, <laughs> just be a camp host, yep. live that life. But yeah, fishing um, and forestry and uh, fish and game. That's a huge industry. We also had another realtor on our team for a little while and she was a part-time guide for hunting. So she would take people out in neighboring Cave Junction and go out on all these guided hunts for weekends at a time. So that's a huge industry. People are always looking to either go fishing for those big king salmon. Yes. yes. Or they're looking to bag a buck. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, everyone goes deer hunting out here and they like venison. And you'll see a lot of people are also uh, bear hunting as well. Elk hunting is a big thing. There's a couple elk preserves out in Reedsport. Uh, if you drive from Reedsport out to the coast, uh, off on the side, you'll see there's nothing for miles except for a couple like viewpoints. And those viewpoints are a protected herd out there and you'll see them, it'll be like a hundred elk out there. Yeah. That's really cool. And also like if you drive on the 101 in like Crescent City, that whole area, you have to go really slow because the herd is also protected out there by the Native American tribes. And so you can be coming around a corner really quickly and you have to slam on your brakes because it, there will be a big giant elk right there. Um, Heard of elk. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. Well, and salmon from that perspective, isn't the Rogue, the Rogue River that runs through is one of the biggest places for salmon fishing. Yeah. It's huge. In where I live in Grants Pass, there's a park that you can go, a, there's a walkable bridge that goes over the river and the salmon just run through there all the time. When I was younger, the salmon would swim upstream and then after they spawn they die off so there would be like there would be salmon all along the banks of the river yeah. like crazy back then not as much anymore they became really kind of overfished 
And so a lot of the salmon, now you have to apply for a permit and a ticket mm -hmm. to go salmon fishing. Some people joke, never go fishing in Oregon without your lawyer present. <laughs> it's true. It is. Yeah, you gotta be pretty <laughs> careful, but there's also plenty of like, you know, steelhead and trout. There's so many rivers and lakes around us. Yes. We're, we're surrounded by quite a few. All the water. What's your favorite lake to go to? When it's full, Applegate. Really? Yeah. Um, it's always been really fun. Yeah. I just saw a recent picture. Um, my friend was truck driving and he took a picture of Lake Shasta down in California. It's one of our neighboring lakes. And for the last five or six years, because of the drought, it's been really low and very depressing. That baby's full. Full. Super full. <laughs> it looks awesome. I can't wait to get out there this summer. Maybe go paddle boarding. I happen to really like Willow Lake, which is up in the Lake of the Woods system. Yeah. That's um, a pipe to get in there, isn't it? No, no, you can, no, it's just instead of it being right off the, the road, it's like another 20 minutes north. Oh, okay. It's like Shady Cove. And I like it because it's not as packed with like people all the time as like right. Lake of the Woods is. And Lake of the Woods can get a little windy mm -hmm. where Willow Lake is surrounded by trees and like trails. And you can see Mount McLaughlin in the background. It's really beautiful. And you can go paddle boarding. Yeah. And on the paddle boating note, no, there's a lot of lakes that actually have wake laws. So you can't yep. have the big boats on it. You can only have little paddled ones or small, small power boats. For yeah. The fun of just being out there and not yeah. disturbing the fish. Those are awesome lakes to go to, especially with your family. You don't have to worry about the kids as much, um, just a little bit safer. Yeah, I like the, the no wake lakes for sure, but um, those can get kind of crowded. Yeah. So, you know, it's best to go on the off days in the like weekdays instead of the weekends. But you know, I think people are catching on to that. They are. Yeah. <laughs> so along those lines, the forestry industry, you know, Oregon has been a huge manufacturer of lumber for a long time. Long time. So back in the day, there used to be a ton of mills out here. There's not as many anymore. Mm -mm. However, some of those mills that closed down have now reopened. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. In like in Rogue River, you know, pass by right off the freeway. There's a huge mill there. I think it's the Murphy Mill. And they, when I went to high school out here, they've closed down and now they, they've reopened for manufacturing. Huh. Good for them. Yeah. That's huge. So what do you think there are some topics surrounding <laughs> the forestry industry? Yes. Let's hear it. Based off what I'm seeing, it's a lot of conservation. Okay. It's trying to save the forest, prevent the mass cutting down of trees uh -huh. and clear cuts. But then it walks a thin line because if you don't have that, a lot grows and it gets very thick. Yep. And is a leading cause to a lot of forest fires. Yes. And we walk a very thin line with that on a yearly basis. Yes. Of whether or not it's going to be a crazy fire season or not. Super true. A lot of people have varying political perspectives. We're either not clearing the forest enough or we're doing too much. Yep. You know, it's a, it's never, <laughs> no one's ever happy. But, of course. you know, I think that a lot of that goes hand in hand with like talking about the, the salmon runs and protecting the salmon yes. as well. There's been a lot of talk about conserving the forests and not doing mass clear cuts because of the ecosystem. And then also, you know, endangering certain wildlife and making right. sure to protect them as well. So they've come up with a lot of different solutions. A lot of companies are mandated to replant mm -hmm. and reforest the areas anywhere that they cut. They're also doing selective cutting. But along those lines is going back to what Tim was talking about is um, the fire danger and making sure to, um, you know, cut back and, and clear that undergrowth. Um, right. And we've talked a little bit about that in other videos before about fire prevention and fire danger and especially making defensible space around your home. Yes. Um, you know, and everyone kind of has different perspectives on that. So as with everything. Yep. Along those lines of talking about the top five industries, Oregon and especially Southern Oregon takes a lot of pride in the top six employers in Jackson County. Many of those 30% are women owned businesses. So go Southern Oregon. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's a big, big number. Yeah. Women owned businesses. I love it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that any of these, well, maybe Amy's Kitchen <laughs> uh, might be women owned still, but um, you know, it's nice to see women kind of popping up and doing their own thing and yes. making it happen. And a lot of small businesses recently. Yes. Just downtown Medford, I'd probably say over the past year, seven or eight new places have opened and are still open. Yeah. From food trucks to just local eateries, little shops yeah. in downtown. I think it's cool because, you know, there's a lot more demand for those independently owned shops, things that are no longer like the big box stores. Yeah. I think millennials really just don't like that. And mm -hmm. we're making the push towards different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of cool. You know, you each shop is a little bit more eclectic. They're all different, you know, and then it makes for 
a little bit more of a downtown vibe. There's walkability because of that. You're going from one shop to the next mm -hmm. to the next and really patronizing those those independent businesses right. and creating entrepreneurship. And it's huge for the downtown activities like Pear Blossom this weekend. Yep. Or Fourth of July festivities, uh, the downtown cruise, all the different stuff that happens that really blow up Medford. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's there's a ton of small businesses that profit off of these like festivities that are mm -hmm. coming around it. Definitely Pear Blossom. They always have a whole like downtown area with you know tents and everyone's kind of <laughs> kind of like a craft fair but uh, a little bit different you know there's it's very eclectic but it's definitely burgeoning it's getting bigger and bigger there's like downtown coalition and project and just a lot of people doing different things so it's pretty cool all right so we're going to talk a little bit more about manufacturing another big industry here in oregon and again one of those companies that i was talking about on the top five list is right here, Harry and David. They're a huge employer in the area. They attract a lot of really qualified, skilled employment from all around neighboring states. They bring in a ton of new people to the area. And, you know, they're not just known for their pairs anymore. You'll know them pretty much nationwide. They own a ton of different subsidiary companies and they do baskets and chocolates and just all kinds of cool stuff. So Harry and David's located right here in our backyard. All right, so talking about manufacturing, it's not just Harry and David here. Um, what are some other places that are known for their manufacturing in Oregon? Nike and Intel. Where are they at? Actually in Beaverton, surprisingly enough. So Beaverton is just outside of Portland. Mm -hmm. And yeah, their headquarters are huge. They have a whole campus up there. I know Nike, actually, that's their affiliation with Hugo Bo. Yes. They sponsor the team. Everything, new uniforms every year, mm -hmm. gear and a massive shopping center actually at the headquarters. Oh yeah, it's huge. <laughs> huge benefit, huge employer for Oregon. Another well-known manufacturer is actually Amazon and Facebook. Most people don't know that, but they actually hold a lot of data centers and servers in Oregon, but on the Eastern side, because it needs to be dry and arid uh, climates. And, and so out of something like, you know, 10 mega server centers for Facebook and Meta, around the world, one of them is here in Bend. That's huge, that's yeah. a big deal. Wild, right? Yeah. So along the lines of manufacturing and other industries, what's another quick little fun fact about Oregon? That hydroelectricity actually provides 66% of the electricity. It's pretty green around here. Pretty green. We like to keep it clean and renewable energy is kind of our thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, it's a great source of employment. There's a ton of dams yeah. around here. You know, all the, the different reservoirs going on. In fact, in the past like 20 years or so, many of the reservoirs um, and the dams were blown for ecological reasons, like we were talking about earlier with conservation. And now it's allowing for the natural water to be restored and the, you know, the natural flow of things to continue. <laughs> but yes, hydroelectricity and dams are also uh, a great source of employment around here, especially when it comes to forestry and all those park rangers and cute little campsites that we all loops, like to go to. Loops right back around to yep. conservation and yep. Oregon's green and forests. We are pretty green. We like it. One of the things that we noticed as we we're walking around doing this video is we're putting in more and more of those uh, electric charging stations for mm -hmm. electric cars. Yes, finally. Yeah. Yeah, we're keeping up with the times. We're trying to, especially Southern Oregon. Northern Oregon, they're everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, thanks guys for tuning in today. If you have any questions about the industries that we see here in Southern Oregon, we'd be happy to help you with that. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for more videos to come. And thanks guys.